I want to give you an important energy and ascension update for 2021. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean. Welcome to my channel where I give you the knowledge you need to evolve and ascend with clarity and confidence. In this video, I want to give you some important updates about where we are in our ascension journey and about the energy on this planet at this point in 2021. Now, if you've been following me, you know that I channel a group of beings by the name of Telstar, including Archangel Michael. So yesterday I had a very interesting conversation with one of the beings in Telstar named Adam and also with Archangel Michael. Now, the cool thing is, is that I can see them and hear them so that I'm able to sit down and have a conversation with them, just like I might have a conversation with you. Now, one of the great concerns that they currently have for us on this planet has to do with the way that we are being divided into tribes that are almost cult-like in nature. And Adam explained it to me this way. He said that the tribalism that is developing here is not really a sign of evolving. In fact, it's kind of a sign of devolving. And here's why. Now he did say that there can be such a thing as a healthier, more advanced version of tribes. But what's happening here is that humanity is devolving into a more primitive version of cults and sects that are mostly about strict belief systems that people must adhere to in order to be accepted. He said that his definition of a cult is a group of people who have only one gauge of acceptance. You must believe what they believe or you will be rejected. He said that the biggest problem with this is that it takes people away from their hearts. And a deep connection with your heart is absolutely mandatory if you want to ascend in this universe. He said that there's really very little independent thought left on this planet. Now here's something really interesting. He said that when you lose your connection to your heart, you become much more vulnerable to being mentally controlled and programmed. And that's because in our natural state, the heart is meant to inform the mind about what reality is. And when that heart connection is cut off or lost, the mind has no internal authority to direct it. So then by default, it seeks to understand reality from outside sources. And the more that that heart connection is cut off, the more desperate the mind will become to search for answers out here. And that's a lot of what we see happening today. So now I want to share with you a fascinating story of why the controllers are doing what they're doing to us, how they're doing it, and how it affects our choice between ascension and AI. I think that when you see this, you're going to have a real understanding of the energy that we are dealing with today. And it's really important that we understand this and break free of it because it's likely only to get worse as we move deeper into this year of 2021. Now, I don't know about you guys, but lately I've been feeling that the energy on this planet feels really stuck. But after talking with Adam and Archangel Michael, it made a whole lot of sense to me about why I was feeling this way. So I want to share that with you guys right now. I'm going to show you exactly how we are being mind controlled and conditioned to potentially end all chances of ascension and moved into AI. Now we have always had some version of tribes and various groupings of people on this planet. And here are some of the main ones in our more recent history. Religions, of course, are a big one. And we have things like countries, we have cultures, and we have families. Have you noticed that those are the very same 
um, tribes or groups that the controllers are now trying to break down and destroy. They're kind of trying to do this under the guise of oneness, fairness, uniformity, um, you know, but basically there's a kind of a vibration of sameness to all of it in terms of their excuse for doing it, that is. But what they really want to do is they want to destroy all of the old systems in order to recreate how life on this planet functions so that it functions in greater alignment with AI. So essentially the old systems are being destroyed and people are being locked down so they won't interact and create something else on their own. And now we are at the point where they claim we're gonna be in a near permanent form of lockdown and always wearing masks. And this is a big part of how they're destroying the old systems, how they're using all of these things as excuses for why they are destroying the old systems. So we are actually shifting away from our former main tribal systems of things like religion and family and culture and nations and all of those things that in many cases were multidimensional, um, very physical, and in many cases, very creative. We're being shifted into a completely different system of tribalism that is downgraded, flat, and much more superficial. So let me explain what I mean by that. The tribes we are being shifted into now are premised on a very simplistic paradigm. It's real simple. It's like, if you think this way, you will be accepted. And if you don't think this way, you will be rejected. So these kind of dumbed down tribal models are being used to further divide humanity and to shut down our hearts. And one of the strangest versions of this is how politics and spirituality are now being mixed together. See, politics has always been said to be a blood sport. It is always, always, always about who's winning and who is losing. And politics is very much uh, being framed as good versus evil. It's said by both sides that the other side is evil and will destroy your life. And whatever side you are on is the good side that is looking out for your best interests and will save you from the bad side. So fear of the other side has now become the driving force in politics. So now it appears that politics has infiltrated the spiritual communities of religion and the new age. And we hear a very similar type of political rhetoric. It's all about winning and losing. I mean, we actually even hear statements like God wins being applied to a political campaign. But here's the thing, you guys, the saying God wins is absurd because God is not in a battle of any kind. And that's because God is omnipresent. And in truth, there is no such thing as that which is not that omnipresent creative force of all that is. So to say that that power, that, that power of that creator is in a battle doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But when you start to introduce a political type of mindset into spirituality, then spirituality becomes less and less about evolving and more and more about winning versus losing. And another example of how we see um, a political mindset infiltrating the spiritual community is that who you are as a spiritual being must also include where you stand politically. So now in the modern world, instead of a multidimensional, creative, energetic force of human interaction and human um, exchange of ideas, we have the belief systems of these various tribes being presented on the internet. So what happens is various belief systems are presented and put out on the internet, and then it's your job to assign yourself to whatever belief system you feel most inclined to be a part of. See, this is how they are shutting down our connection to our hearts. Most of our focus now is on gathering information from the internet so we can either decide about or affirm whatever tribe we have chosen to join. 
But unlike in the old days, when a tribe was clearly identified as consisting of actual human beings, today's tribes are actually identified more as prescribed paradigms of thought. And that is a huge, huge difference. So a modern day tribe actually exists as a thought paradigm that we individually choose to attach ourselves to. So let me give you a couple of examples. There is one tribe of truly terrified people who are terrified about a certain health issue who are willing to stay completely isolated and wear two or three masks. And then there is another tribe of people who say, I don't believe any of this. I think it's all a hoax. But notice how the essence of both tribes is about beliefs. And then we, of course, have the political tribes. And this is practically turned into a virtual death match between two sides. Now, both of these examples of tribes, and I'll call them, for example, the virus tribes and the political tribes. These tribes are actually serving a very convenient purpose for the controllers of breaking up families, breaking up friendships, and destroying human relationships altogether. You know, when you think about it, it's kind of like we are acting like proxy soldiers for the controllers. And it's weird because it almost seems like we're fighting a proxy war for these controllers. A war that actually ends up in us destroying ourselves. So if you've ever wondered how a tiny handful of people can control nearly 8 billion people on this planet, well, this is one of the ways that they do it. They actually use us to destroy and manipulate each other. And unfortunately, so many, if not most of us, unwittingly play along with that. And then we can get so caught up in these tribal wars with each other that we forget all about our human evolution. And we even start to think that ascension is all about winning and losing. And it's not about that, it's about evolving. And I also wanna point out that getting trapped in a paradigm about winning and losing is almost always gonna generate a certain amount of fear and also anger, neither of which are conducive to ascension. And what's also rather interesting is now we have a new age version of spiritual tribes. This is sort of like the new age internet version of old world religious tribes. So in this case, people might adopt certain spiritual beliefs and then seek affirmation of those beliefs, not necessarily by looking at reality or by looking into their hearts, but instead they might look for affirmation by seeking out other people or internet sites who adhere to the same beliefs. See, here's the concern, you guys, when it starts to become all about the tribes defined as paradigms of belief, it's not about evolution anymore. And that is really um, a crossover that we really don't want to make, at least not if we're interested in evolving and ascension. So this is really why Adam and Archangel Michael expressed a concern to me. They said we need to be very careful not to tie up our identity with one or more of these tribes. Because in that case, what you're really tying your identity to is a belief system. And that's not who you are. You are not a belief system. You are an infinite being who seeks to evolve in this universe. So in terms of an energy update, here's what I sense right now. Things feel kind of stuck at the moment when it comes to our ascension process. And I think it's because this tribalism state of mind is intensifying. People are holding on for dear life to systems of belief that they think and hope will save them. A lot of people are willing to subject themselves to all kinds of gaslighting, political gaslighting, reality gaslighting, and in some cases, even spiritual gaslighting, just to have something to hang on to. So when this starts happening to a larger and larger extent due to fear, we can actually become derailed from our higher ascension process. We can erroneously start to think that our beliefs are what is going to lead to our ascension. And beliefs won't lead to your ascension. 
And that's because when you talk about beliefs that are attached to tribalism, you are usually dealing with fixed perceptions that are not flexible. See, ascension is a volatile, unpredictable process. And in the process of ascension, reality can change. But when you get attached to a fixed belief, there will be an intense resistance to changing your perception of reality according to reality itself. And I think that's why the energy feels kind of stuck right now. People are beginning to adapt to this new normal because it's been going on for over a year now. And part of this adaptation is to hold on to fixed beliefs that help them to feel better and to feel safe. And then the controller's agenda can just continue to roll out because when we get attached to these fixed beliefs, we are actually playing right into their hands. Because when we get attached to fixed beliefs, we tend to ignore our hearts and we ignore our good, what I call cosmic common sense. So in this case, we're not only sacrificing our physical sovereignty in this brave new world, we also run the risk of sacrificing our mental sovereignty if we're not careful. So I recommend that you step back from all of it every day and assess things for yourself. You wanna stay flexible and responsive. And here's a way you can look at this. You could imagine yourself as a highly intelligent astronaut who just landed on this planet for the first time. I guess that would make you an extraterrestrial astronaut. Now, do you think if you just landed here for the first time as an extraterrestrial, do you think that your first move would be to assess which tribe you belong to and which fixed belief system you can attach your identity to? Of course not. The very first thing you would be aware of is that you would need to be flexible and therefore responsive to whatever is going on here from day to day, moment to moment, etc., etc. See, if you were, for example, um, that extraterrestrial astronaut, you would be coming here with a baseline experience of reality. That would be your anchor, your inner anchor. And that anchor would allow you to be flexible and observe what is actually going on and how indeed you should respond to this ever-changing situation. See, the point is you need an anchor of reality. You need an anchor of your own solid, clear reality because that's what's gonna enable you to relax and be flexible and stay conscious and stay awake and aware in the ever-present moment of now so that you can observe everything going on without being caught up in it. And that anchor of reality, you guys, is always in the same place. It's in your heart. Your heart, as I always say, is the gateway to this incredible universe of beautiful life that does not include any of this craziness. So when you are anchored in your heart, when you are anchored in that beautiful place within you, you don't have a need to get caught up in all of this stuff because getting caught up in it doesn't serve any real purpose in terms of your ascension. Because you see your ascension is all about bringing your physical state of being into alignment with what is in your heart, with that infinite experience of light and love and beauty that is within your heart. It's all about bringing your physical body, your physical experience, your earthly realm of experience to raise it up. This is what ascension is, to elevate it as close as possible to be a match to what you feel in your heart. And that's why if you put too much focus out here, looking for belief systems to attach yourself to, you're gonna miss the main ascension event, which starts right within you. So that's why I've been saying lately that it's really important to certainly gather information, certainly hear what other people have to say, certainly you can learn from other people, but you always wanna be in that neutral position of truth from within your heart, that truth of love, that truth of light, that unwavering presence 
of your infinite divine self because that is the highest form of wisdom. That's what connects you to your higher intelligence and to your true self. So it's really important that you always make sure that that is your center of being, your center of gravity really, because that is what keeps you awake and aware and radiating, radiating the light of your true presence and of who you really are. And it also eliminates a whole lot of confusion. So ultimately, when you put everything I've said together, this is how you preserve your sovereignty. Okay, you preserve your sovereignty at the highest possible level. And that way, you're gonna be able to navigate through all of the craziness happening on this planet in a way that is graceful, in a way that is secure, and in a way that does not plunge you into the duality of fear and anger and stress and all the stuff, uncertainty that goes along with all the craziness going on. So I recommend that you pay attention to what is happening on this planet on an energy level. In other words, intuit and sense and feel the energy, then allow yourself a sufficient amount of flexibility to be able to respond to that energy and respond to what you see happening in the world and what you see happening overall in terms of this planet's journey in the universe. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you think would enjoy this. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I am here every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and positive energy. And I so look forward to seeing you in the next video. Namaste.